Welcome back. So this video lecture series has talked about how we can understand COVID-19 through the lens of control theory. And in this video, I wanna summarize some of what we have discussed in the previous videos uh, and give some kind of summary of the moral takeaways uh, of, of what we learn when we think about this from the lens of control theory. Now, before I jump in, uh, there's a few people I want to thank. I want to thank my wife, Bing Brunton, for providing tons of uh, feedback and really valuable information and general moral support when I was developing this material. I'd also like to thank Derek Franz for his help in uh, producing these videos. Okay, so we're going to jump in and we're going to summarize what we've learned so far and discuss some of the moral takeaways. So this is the diagram we've been uh, looking at throughout this series where we are analyzing the disease system, the spread of the, the coronavirus through a population, and how through principled uh, control decisions and actions we can try to suppress uh, this kind of runaway exponential spread and maintain uh, a rate of infections that is manageable with our current healthcare capacity. And I've stressed many, many times the importance of measuring aspects of the system, of really measuring our system so that we can get this feedback signal, so that we can get robust performance uh, out of our controller. We also need good models of the system so that we can predict what's going to happen um, you know, in our system. So, We've talked a lot about the texture and the challenges of what make this both uh, interesting but also really hard from a modeling and control standpoint. So, uh, and this is just a handful of some of the challenges. So there is uncertainty in every aspect of this. We have uncertainty in our models. So I showed you all of those models and none of them agreed. So we have uncertainty in our models. Our measurements are noisy and imperfect, so there's uncertainty there. When we make a control decision, when we take action, we don't know how effective that's gonna be. That also gives us uncertainty. And this makes sense. This is, we are the controller. Every human is part of this control strategy. It's our actions that are changing the system. And whenever you deal with human dynamics, it's gonna be messy. So uncertainty is just part of the game. We also have varying parameters, so this system is constantly changing, so as different control uh, actions are being taken, as the seasons change, as time goes on, uh, you know, all of the parameters of the system are changing, and, and that's part of what we're trying to do is change these parameters through control, so that's also challenging. Time delays are a major, major problem in control systems in general. So if you want really fast, aggressive feedback control, time delays can really hurt your performance and, and, and hamper that robustness. And there's time delays in every aspect of this. There's time delays in your measurements, how long it takes to detect if someone has this virus. There's time delays in the transmission itself, how long it takes to transmit. There's incubation periods. There's time delays in the controller from when decisions happen to when the actual uh, actions take place, there's, there's time delays. And so understanding how time delays affect performance and what we, uh, what we can expect out of our control system is really important. And we also have fundamental limits on, on what kinds of control actions we can take. So we only can do so much. We can't, you know, micromanage every individual person's, you know, daily life, and nor do we want to. We can't tell people exactly what they can and can't do. And so there's limits on our control. Also, uh, we don't want to you know, shut down essential services. You can't shut down the food supply chain. You can't, you know, we have to have firefighters and police and medical workers and, you know, we, we have to have that basic infrastructure. So there's limits on what we can do with control. And, and that's all, you know, wrapped up into this control design. Okay, good. So we've zoomed into the disease system and we've talked about various strategies for building models. We have zoomed into the measurement system and talked about the importance of extensive surveillance and measurements of our system, both for better control decisions and to update our models as things change. Uh, and we've also talked about various control strategies. Once we have those measurements, once we have those models, how do we actually control our system? For example, using model predictive control. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about some of the kind of morals of, of what we've learned throughout this process. So one of the key takeaways that I can't stress enough 
is that effective feedback control, effective control using feedback absolutely relies on sensors. Sensor measurements are the lifeblood of feedback control and you can't do it without measurements. You can't suppress the system if you had a blindfold on, okay? Or at least it's much, much harder and you can't expect your performance to be as good. And also, time delays are really problematic. So reducing time delays anywhere possible is essential. And we maybe can't control the incubation time of the virus, so we should be focusing on getting faster, more uh, you know, real-time sensor measurements and real-time control actions. So another thing we've talked about is the importance of models. So we, I've talked about lots and lots of different modeling strategies to understand how this spreads and how we can control it. And one of the points is that even though all of these models are different and most of them dif disagree and there's no perfect model for this disease system, even imperfect models can be very, very useful for control theory. And in fact, Control theory, this is maybe the biggest point, control theory is a framework for balancing imperfect models and imperfect measurements to still make good decisions and to still have good performance. That is what control theory was designed to do, and that's what it's been doing for decades in many, many complex systems like designing a robust and stable internet or power grids or supply chains. Control theory is specifically designed to take imperfect models and imperfect measurements and combine them to make good, robust uh, decisions to get the performance you need. And there's limitations on that, and we need to understand what those limitations are. Okay, um, another point I want to make is how essential it is to have infrastructure in place. So um, there's lots of, of groups that are working really hard for measuring the system, for, for getting boots on the ground and actually measuring the different parameters of the system and how many people are infected and what strains there are. And there's groups that are modeling uh, the data and predicting what's gonna happen. And I think that we need to give a lot of credit for the foresight of having some of this infrastructure already in place, but we also need to be investing uh, in this infrastructure in the future. We need to have sensing and actuating infrastructure in place. So in Southeast Asia, they have a lot of infrastructure in place because of previous scares because of the SARS um, scares. So they, they, after SARS, developed a lot of this infrastructure for surveillance networks and have this in place. Um, when I think about this infrastructure, I can't help but think about my field of, of aerospace engineering where like, you would never get on an airplane if you didn't believe that it, that airplane already had the sensors and the actuators in place to control the system. If you thought that there was some instability that, that couldn't be detected with the sensors on board and couldn't be controlled, you shouldn't step foot on that airplane. And so we have known forever, this is just basic control design, that if you wanna do a good job, you need sensors and you need actuators and you need enough of them to meet the specifications of your control system. Okay, so that's something we need to be, to be thinking about. I also wanna point out that success is not flashy you're much more likely to hear about this bridge than this bridge. And you know, if we do our job, I say we because we are all part of that controller. We are all individually, all of our actions are the control law. And if we do our job and the bridge doesn't collapse, you know, that's a lot less flashy than if it does collapse. And I think you know, a lot of people are already preparing for if you know, we get this under control and things don't go uh, catastrophically wrong, there are going to be people that said that it wasn't that big of a deal all along. This was, you know, this is just a bad flu. This is, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. And you know what? We should be prepared for that. Sometimes when you do your job and things don't go wrong, you don't necessarily get credit for that. Um, but, you know, we still want to de develop, you know, stable bridges that don't collapse. Okay. Um, there's kind of a meta point here that I've been thinking about a lot and I haven't really addressed that much in any of the specific videos so I want to talk about here, which is uh, what cost function are we optimizing? So any of you who know me and who've you know, watched my, my boot camp on control theory know that I view control theory essentially as applied optimization. 
your control design is basically you're trying to optimize some cost function given the constraints of your system. Given what you can measure and what the dynamics of your system are, you're trying to optimize your controller for some overarching cost function. And this is kind of problematic when we have something so societally important like the, the spread of COVID-19. Obviously, lives are, are critical. We don't want people to die. We want to, to save lives. There's also livelihoods. We, we want people to get back to work. We want kids to go back to school. This is a huge, you know, there's a huge economic and societal impact as well for the control actions that we're taking. And how do you balance those, those cost functions? That's incredibly challenging. But I think we do have to be aware that at some level, this is, we are trying to optimize something. And this is, uh, in my mind, this is one of the reasons you need leadership. This is one of the most clear motivations for leadership is when you have these really hard optimization problems and hard cost functions that any one of us you know, shouldn't necessarily be defining, that's when you need leadership, is to kind of make those decisions about what matters, when, and how. Um, I think that's really important to, to think about. So as we as we phase in the workforce and we start getting kids back to school, you know, how are we going to optimize this system to you know save lives, but also you know save livelihoods as well? That's that's really important. Okay, so this has been a lecture series on understanding uh, COVID nineteen from the control theory perspective. There's going to be lots of hard decisions ahead, and I hope that this has been educational, and I hope that we recognize that those hard decisions should be made at least with knowledge uh, of control theory and kind of everything we know about how to interact with complex systems like the spread of a disease. I'm Steve Brunton. Thank you very much for watching.